but I'll have my team discuss this. I've got a whole bunch of folks that I'm going to be meeting with over the course of the next several days. And, as I said, historically, our relationship with the Philippines is one of our most important. And my relationship with the Philippine people has been extraordinarily. Warm and productive. So I expect that will continue. But I want to make sure that the. Setting is right and the timing is right for us to have the best conversation possible. Question, so you're not going to meet with him? President Obama, well I'm no, as I said, I'm going to just make an assessment. I just got out of these meetings. What is certainly true is, is that the issues of how we approach. Fighting crime and drug trafficking is a serious one for all of us, and we've got to do it the right way. Michelle Kaczynski Question, thank you. Same subject, I guess, of colorful guys. What can you tell us about this hour and a half long meeting you had? With President Putin the tone of it, any progress that was made? And do you agree with him that the relationship between our two countries is now frozen? On the cyber front, Senator Reid recently cited intelligence briefings when he was expressing his suspicions. that Russia is trying to meddle in the election and may even have direct ties to one of the campaigns. What can you tell us? Do you think Russia is trying to influence the You.
S election through hacking? President Obama, well, President Putin is less colorful. But typically the tone of our meetings are candid, blunt, business-like dash and this one was no different. We had a range of issues that we had to discuss, but the two most important were, as has been reported. Discussions that have been taking place between Secretary Kerry and Russia's Foreign Minister. Sergei Lavrov, about ways in which we can institute a meaningful, serious verifiable cessation of hostilities in Syria, and our capacity to provide some humanitarian relief to families. Children, women who are suffering enormously under the burdens of that war. As you'll recall, we had initiated a cessation of hostilities a while back. Initially, it did lessen some of the violence, and then slowly it unwound. And we're back into a situation in which Assad's regime is bombing with impunity. That, in turn, we think is actually strengthening the capacity of Nusra to recruit people who might not. Have initially been sympathetic to terrorism but now view anyone who's fighting against Assad as legitimized. And that is a very dangerous dynamic. And so we have had some productive conversations about what a real cessation of hostilities would look like that would allow us both. the United States and Russia, to focus our attention on common enemies, like ISIL and Nusra. But given the gaps of trust that exist, that's a tough negotiation. And we haven't yet closed the gaps in a way where we think it would actually work. But my instructions to Secretary Kerry, 
and Mr. Putin's instructions to Mr. Lavrov was to keep working at it over the next several days because the faster we can provide some relief to folks on the ground, the better off we're going to be. And that, then, is a predicate for us to be able to transition into a serious conversation. About a political solution to this problem that would involve all the parties. that have either directly or indirectly involved themselves in the Syrian conflict. We also spent time talking about Ukraine. there is a Minsk agreement that arose out of the Normandy negotiations between Russia. Ukraine, France, and Germany, but it hasn't been implemented. And I made very clear that until it is implemented, the United States is not going to pull down sanctions. That it is important for both sides to try to seize this opportunity in the coming weeks. to finalize an agreement and to figure out a sequence in which that document is put into effect. And there was agreement not just between myself and MR. Putin, but also with Chancellor Merkel and President Olan. That that effort should increase in urgency over the next several weeks. And so that what was constructive but not conclusive. And we'll have to see whether we can actually get this done, or whether, in fact, President Putin despite talking about wanting a negotiation and a solution in fact. Is comfortable with this constant low-grade conflict along the Russia-Ukraine border. And finally, we did talk about cybersecurity, generally.
I'm not going to comment on specific investigations that are still live and active. But I will tell you that we've had problems with cyber intrusions from Russia in the past, from other countries in the past. And Look, we're moving into a new era here where a number of countries have significant capacities. And, frankly, we got more capacity than anybody both offensively and defensively. But our goal is not to suddenly, in the cyber arena. Duplicate a cycle of escalation that we saw when it comes to other arms races in the past. But rather to start instituting some norms so that everybody is acting responsibly. We're going to have enough problems in the cyberspace with non-state actors who are engaging in theft and using the internet for all kinds of illicit practices. and protecting our critical infrastructure, and making sure that our financial systems are sound. And what we cannot do is have a situation in which suddenly this becomes the wild, wild west. where countries that have significant cyber capacity start engaging in competition unhealthy competition or conflict through these means when I think, wisely we put in place some norms when it comes to using other weapons. So that's been a topic of conversation with President Putin as it has been with other countries. We've started to get some willingness on the part of a lot of countries around the world. including through our G20 process, to adopt these norms, but we've got to make sure that we're observing them. William Wong Question Thank you, MR. President. Heading into Laos, 
What are the main things you can offer its leaders? And what do you plan to push for in return? On the offering side, for example, I'm wondering how you view U.S. responsibility for unexploded ordnance. On the asking side, what are you pushing for most? Is it human rights? Closer U.S. ties in. The face of China? Improving their problems with governance and corruption? What's the priority? President Obama, well, look, symbolically, it is important. I'll be the first U.S. president to visit Laos. And when you think about the history of the United States and Laos, I think it's useful to see what's happened in the evolution of our relationship with Vietnam, a country that I just visited recently. At the outset, as we're trying to build trust, a lot of work can be done around war legacy issues. For the Lao, that involves dealing with unexploded ordnance. which is still plaguing big chunks of the countryside. And since Laos is still a relatively poor country that is developing. Their capacity alone to clean that up is hampered by a lack of resources. We should help. And my expectation is, is that. In our meetings over the course of several days, that we'll be able to provide some really concrete assistance that ensures. That innocent kids who are running through a field, or a farmer that's trying to clear a field. Or a business that's trying to get set up that they're not endangered by the possibility of an explosion. Likewise, we have deep commitments to accounting for those who were lost during that war.
and as was true with Vietnam, to the extent that we're able to find out more about our missing in action and our POWs. That not only provides enormous comfort and meaning for families and is consistent with our traditions, but it also ends up being a show of good faith on the part of the country. and a way for us to move into a next phase of a relationship. And so a lot of the conversation I think will start there, but it doesn't end there. We've had an initiative, for example, helping all the countries along the Mekong. Delta to find ways to harness development and deal with environmental issues. And that's something that we've been doing through ASEAN over the course of several years now. For us to be able to expand some of that work I think would be important. Establishing people-to-people -people exchanges is another area that historically has been important. I do think Laos seeing the enormous economic progress that Vietnam and China and others have made. are going to be very interested in finding ways in which they can advance into the global economy and help themselves grow, and I think that we can be a useful partner there. So I think there will be a broad-based agenda. But if you think about the visit I made to Ho Chi Minh City, and driving through those streets. and the enormous wellspring of goodwill that you saw that. Started with some of the same kinds of steps that we're going to be taking with Laos. but I think we can hopefully do it faster. Make more progress faster than we did over the course of 10, 15 years, because we've learned some things. And I think Laos is very eager to engage with us, 
and we're eager to engage with them.